This is a podcast from the Orthocycle Foundation, a registered charity in the UK. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the application of splintage for lower limb fractures. When a bone fractures, the bone ends overlap. This is because of the pull of the muscles. There's bleeding into the potential space around the fracture, and there could be pain with movement. There's also potential for more soft tissue damage. When we put on traction, we pull the bones out to length. This could be direct using the bone itself, or indirect using the soft tissues as a proxy. We put on traction in order to stabilise long bones prior to the surgery. It can also be used for first aid or for transport. It gives good pain relief and can prevent further soft tissue trauma and bleeding. It's helpful in, uh, prior to surgery because it keeps the muscles out to length. In this series we're going to look at three different types of traction. The sake splint is primarily used in pre-hospital care. It's very quick to apply, uh, but it is a bit more expensive than the Kendrick traction splint. It's useful because it can apply traction to bilateral femoral fractures at the same time, but some of the disadvantages are that it puts pressure on the perineum, which means that there's a risk of pressure sores with prolonged use. It puts pressure on the inferior pubic rami, so that means that there's a risk of further injury if you have a pelvic ring injury. In this demonstration, we're going to uh, be applying a Sega splint to Karim's leg again. So, uh, as before, we need to make sure that we've got all the equipment available. We need to make sure that we've gone through uh, the ATLS A, B and C to make sure he's stable, given the femoral block to control his pain, and we need to check neurovascularly that uh, his pulses and sensation are intact. Uh, and I think they all are. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Sega splint. Gonna put it together. So we have a bar which is going to go into in between his legs. So this is a perineal bar. Uh, rather than um, uh, the going on to the initial tuberosity. And then there's a uh, extension of this, this one. And you can this part basically ratchets into here. You lift up this part and that goes together and this handle is used to apply your traction. And we also have some elasticated velcro um, uh, straps and these are going to be used to strap the legs together afterwards and we have two ankle straps which are uh, conveniently labelled left and right so we're going to be applying the left side one so again if you can find some traction to the leg Going to apply this to the ankle and it's held down by a velcro strap and it's got a little loop that goes underneath. At the top end we've got a, a strap and this is going to be going into the groin. I'm going to pass this underneath the leg and tie it through this hoop. It goes through both and then down through the other. And I'm going to push that, again being careful with the man, not to have the genitals. And then I'm going to tighten this strap up a little bit. At the bottom end of the Sega Sprint, there's a little hatch which I can put the boot hitch onto. So I'm going to literally loop that inside. And then essentially that's going to go up into the groin. I'm going to hold on to this uh, part of the splint this, and I can basically apply traction. Okay, so we've now got quite decent traction applied to his leg. And then the straps. And what I'm going to do is 
I'm actually going to tie both legs together and I'll pass this under your bow. So I'm also using the other leg to splint his femur. his legs together in several places. And pass this one right into the top of my step. And that's us all done. So that's the application of the save sprint. A lot quicker, but there are problems with the save sprint. We're putting a lot of pressure on the perineum. And if you uh, are using a sailor splint, there's a risk that if you have prolonged pressure on the podium, it's going to cause a pressure sore. Um, it's designed to be pushing against the initial tuberosity, but really it's pushing against your pubic surfaces. So if you've got, if you've got a pelvic fracture as well, it's probably not ideal. The, the Tom splint you can probably still use even if you've got a pelvic fracture. Okay. If you're interested in our videos and the work of the Orthocycle Foundation, you can visit our website and if you wish, you can make a donation.